Hi, my name's Craig. I'm a video producer from Enra, and here on my channel, I'm all about sharing with you everything you need to know to be an efficient video creator so you can spend more time making creative videos. As video editors, we can be asked to make videos that fit a specific frame size or a specific frame rate or to fit platforms such as Facebook Square Video or Instagram's Vertical Video. So on Facebook, Square Videos perform better because it takes up more of that news feed. Same with Instagram, the Vertical Videos fit perfectly within a mobile phone screen. So if you're looking for your videos to perform well and get seen and uh, get the most reach, then you're better off playing to the advantages of these uh, sequence settings that they're telling you to upload into. It's also a good way to show more value to your video production team and to your clients by giving them a, a bit more of an offering by saying like, I oh, can go out and do one shoot, but I can give you four different edits. It's a good way to show off your skill as a video producer. It shows that you're a bit more savvy, that you're giving them the value for uh, the money that you're essentially getting paid to make video for. To get started making our presets, we're gonna to to open up a new sequence. So we can go to file, new, and then sequence. Or we could go down to the project panel, click new item and sequence. Uh, you can see down on the left here, there's tons of presets that we can start off making our own sequences for, or we could just pick one of these. We can also make our own ones down here in the custom tab. I'm gonna give you the numbers for all these sequences anyway, so let's just head over to the next tab along, which is settings. Let's do something really easy and make a square video, uh, which we can use on Facebook or Instagram. Now for this, we're gonna go up to edit mode and just select custom. Our time base is essentially just uh, the frame rate that we're gonna be editing in. This should match the, the footage that you're recording in, which I've done a complete video on about editing uh, slow motion footage properly so that it looks as best as possible. In that video, I've told you exactly what editing frame rate you need to be setting in your sequence depending on what footage you're coming back with. I typically pick 25, so I'm gonna pick 25. You never want to pick over 30, so you can only really sort of pick between 23.976, 24, 25, or 29.7, or 30. So let's just pick that for just now. So I'm gonna give you the numbers for um, if you're editing in 4K or uh, HD. Uh, let's start off with HD, so 1080, which is the shortest edge of HD footage, and that's just going to make that 1080 to make it a square. Okay, nice and easy. Everything else we can leave the same square pixel aspect ratio. We never really have to change that unless we're dealing with tape or anamorphic fields. Just progressive because nobody really shoots interlaced anyway unless you're using camcorders or uh, broadcasting cameras. Video previews is a whole other topic uh, which is designed to help uh, speed up your exporting times. If you'd like to see a video on that, I can go into that. For the meantime, I'm just gonna leave that as it is because I'm, um, I mainly just edit MP4 footage anyway. Uh, we wanna make sure that maximum bit depth is unticked. Maximum render quality, uh, I'll touch on this throughout the video, but I'm just gonna leave that unticked just now. Down the bottom left here, we're gonna collect, select Save Preset, and we're gonna make sure that we have named this accurately so then we know exactly what we're going for. I'm gonna leave all the notes for uh, all the resolutions that I'm gonna be plugging into these sequences in the description below if you want to copy them yourself. But if you hang around to the end, I'll tell you how you can download these presets yourself, and I'll show you as well how you upload them into your Premiere Pro so you don't need to spend the time um, making these yourself. After that's loaded up, we're just gonna move swiftly on to the 4K. So the resolution for 4K is 384 by 2160. So the shortest edge on that is 2160. Because it's a square video, it's just gonna be 2160 by 2160. And to make sure that that's a one by one, we could just check the, the aspect ratio, uh, little sort of cal uh, display there at the end of the frame size there. Next, let's go on to four by five Instagram videos. So for HD, what you're gonna want to do is have your horizontal as 1080. In order to calculate four by five, uh, what we're gonna do is divide 1080 by five and then multiply the result by four, which gives us 864. And you can see it's changed there to four by five. Leave your frame rate as whatever you want to say. 
If you're scaling up your footage, then tick this. If not, leave it as is and save that as four by five. Go back in and we'll do the same for uh, 4K. The shortest edge of 4K footage is 2160. Again, we're gonna divide that by five, multiply the result by four, and that'll give us 1728. And this is the process all the way through. We're just changing the, the frame size, essentially, of all these sequences, make sure they're named properly so we can find them quickly. Uh, moving on to Instagram landscape, uh, what you want to do is instead of looking at the shortest edge of the footage that you're working with, we're going to look at the longest edge. So for HD, this will be 1920. The aspect ratio is a bit odd. It's 192 to 101. So really we're um, dividing 1920 by 192 and then multiplying that by 10, which will give us 1010. So slightly narrower than 16 by nine, ever so slightly. Uh, it's not gonna give us a lot of headroom in edit if we're wanting to recompose our shots. Let's just save this as Instagram because only Instagram uses this. And for 4K, uh, what we're gonna do is plug in uh, the longest edge of 4K footage, which is 3840, divide that by 192 and that and multiplying that by 101, which gives us 2020. And again, just remember, if you're upscaling 1080 footage in this sequence, just make sure you tick maximum render quality. So hopefully that's giving you an idea of how square, vertical, and in and the landscape videos work. I can show you everything to uh, I can show you the step-by-step -step process of doing this uh, hopefully uh, if you've got the numbers that I'm leaving in the description below and I'm giving you the presets you can download these presets upload them yourself have a look understand how they work try plugging them in yourself uh, you can't really go wrong here as long as you're following the numbers that I've detailed down in the description below I'm going to show you quickly how to do a widescreen cinema uh, to save you letterboxing. It's a bit of an aesthetics choice whether you want to be exporting a video that has letterbox, uh, like a black bars on the top and bottom. A lot of people do that and upload 1920, uh, a, nine, a full HD video with those black bars. Aesthetically, I don't like that. I'd rather have like the true sort of widescreen effect and this is how you do it without adding in black bars. So you're taking the longest edge of whatever footage you're working in. If you're working in HD, it's 1920. I'm gonna be using the cinema standard uh, widescreen aspect ratio, which is 2.39 to one. So you're taking 1920, uh, dividing that by 2.39, and then you end up with 803. And this should give you a very narrow sort of field of view. It will give you a bit of flexibility in order to uh, repo your footage up and down keep your frame rate the same, but uh, if you want to add a little bit of extra cinematic flavor to your uh, video edit, if you're uh, wanting to edit in widescreen, change your frame size to 24 or 23.976 and either uh, transcode and conform your footage to match that or uh, just let Premiere Pro try and fix that for you. Premiere Pro is actually quite good at doing that. It might just make your computer run a little bit slower. If you're scaling um, your footage up from anything smaller than 1080, make sure you tick the box. Let's save this preset as HD widescreen 2.3921 FPS. Ultra HD footage is 3840. You divide that by 2.39 to give us 1606. Now, now that we've made all these presets, let's find out how we're going to uh, download them and install them. So um, you can find the links to download all the presets here. If you've made your own, you can find them by going to yeah, your documents. There'll be a folder there called Adobe. If you've installed Adobe um, this way, Premiere Pro, the newest version, which is 13.09. If you go to your Creative Cloud folder for your profile, then settings and then custom, you'll find all the custom sequences that you have right here. And then what I would do is uh, just copy these, upload them to a 
a folder somewhere else on a, a drive or in the cloud. So then if anything happens to Premiere Pro, because you never know what might happen, the end of the world, Judgment Day, Skynet, you can just sort of save these, upload them back into Premiere Pro and you've not, you don't have to build them all again. The same thing if you've downloaded the sequence settings that I've made available to you today, uh, you can just copy them from whatever folder they're in, follow this thread here and then paste them in here and it will automatically just show up in your sequence dialog box in your custom folder there. So when you're exporting your Instagram or Facebook uh, sequences, you want to make sure that you're exporting this in a H.264 codec, more commonly known as MP4. This is the format that they will receive. Like I said before, you'll also want to make sure that your edit's no longer than 60 seconds because it'll just get rejected upon upload. And if you scroll right down to the bottom of your export uh, window, it'll tell you the file size for that and you want to keep that under four gigabytes. To make sure that the video it matches your sequence settings, you want to make sure that all the tick boxes along the right hand side of the window are checked and what that will just do is make sure that the frame size matches the frame size of your sequence and your frame rate and your bit rate. Typically for working with uh, footage that's not bigger than 1080p, I tend to just pick bit rates between 10 and 12 megabytes per second. So uh, bear that in mind as well and that will keep your file size down. It will make it a lot quicker as well when you're transferring your video from your computer to your phone and then from your phone up onto uh, Instagram servers. This was a pretty advanced tutorial but once you've got your head around it there's literally no limit to what you can create and make your own custom sequence. This video was part of a Premiere Pro um, introduction um, I've already done a video about the difference between the source monitor and the program monitor and how you can use the source monitor to make faster edits, how you can import your footage quicker and how you can uh, organise your footage to make your edit a lot quicker as well uh, and the basic understanding of a timeline sequence so um, you, can, you know how creative you can be with it. There's going to be more videos about Premiere Pro coming up so if you want to um, find out when they're uh, going to come out make sure that you're subbed to this channel and you hit that bell icon you can check out the playlist to all the other videos right here um, if this video was useful to you you can drop a like on this video make sure that you also download the preset files that I've included in the description below I'll also have a tutorial video in this playlist about how you can import these preset files so you can start making your own Instagram videos and when you do make sure you leave a comment and you share it with me so I can share it back for you. In the meantime, I'll see you later.